nuclear submarines have an advantage over their diesel counterparts in that the hydroplane acts as a built-in diving board, which allows you to effect a spectacular entry into the water. <laughs> Swim around, get yourself clean. Once you are clean, climb up the rope ladder, get yourself back on the casing, dry yourself off, and then make your way to the other hydroplane where the barbecue is set up. <laughs> <laughs> And believe me, if you've been uh, dived on patrol for a couple of months, an afternoon on the surface like this is an absolute treat. And I remember on occasion we were off the coast of Bermuda, uh, we had Hanson Bay, and it was an absolutely glorious day. There was a cloud in the sky, I've no idea what the air temperature was, but the, the seawater was like bath water. It was this beautiful crystal blue, it was absolutely clear, you, you could see for miles. And it, it, absolute flat calm, it was like glass. And I can say that, because when I dived in, I cut myself. <laughs> and it was one of those magical moments, and we've all had them in our lives, one of those magical moments where you think, you know what, I don't want this to end. And just so I was thinking that, the klaxon went, and they called us back on board, and the submarine was going to die. And what I did, I took the very slowest breaststroke I possibly could back to the boat. And everyone else climbed up, rubbed that out, dried themselves off, went below, and eventually it was just me, the submarine, and whichever direction you look, just this beautiful, clear blue ocean all the way to the horizon in every direction. And I just thought, why does this have to end? And just so I was thinking that something big, white, twice the size of me, hit me, shunted me about four feet in the water, and I virtually ran across the water. I did go swimming again for the next two years. <laughs> I developed a phobia about sharks. Uh, as you can imagine, my shipmates were very helpful and supportive. <laughs> <laughs> in, in particular, Dick, who, uh, who used to choose what films we took to see. So the next trip, we took Jaws, and then Jaws 2, <laughs> Jaws 3, Piranha, Gator, Swarm. When he ran out of fish films, he took Matthew with. And what we do when we had hands bait, I'll just uh, get a bucket, lower it over the side, and then just have a wash in the bucket. And as, as I've come up through the hatch with my bucket, the entire ship's coming to go, <laughs> and and it, was, it was about two years later, and we were off, we were off the coast of Australia. And again, it was an absolutely glorious day, not cloud in the sky. And uh, I was on the, uh, the coast with my bucket, and the, the, the crew was splashing about in the water, having a fantastic time. And I thought, do you know what? In the last two years, I haven't even seen the shot. Well, apart from London, Nick can torment me with every time we watch a film. And I thought, do you know what? <coughs> I'm going to go in. And I stood up and I walked along that hydroplane. And as I did so, the men on Casey could see what I was doing. And one of them just started applauding. And that, that applause went all the way through the ship's company. Every man on the casing was applauding while I was walking along that hydroplane. The men in the water could hear this applause. And they looked up to see why they saw me walking along the hydroplane. They also stopped splashing them out and also started applauding. And it was it was fantastic. It was probably the one and only time in my life I've ever had complete 100% approval from everyone around me. It's like, it's like one of those moments in one of those cheesy Hollywood films where the kid throws his crutches away and says, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> and, and to be honest with you, it wasn't a heroic decision on my part. I was just fed up and then taking the piss out. <laughs> but while I stood on the edge of that hydroplane, with the entire ship's company applauding, I just thought to myself, do you know what? I'm going to remember this moment for the rest of my life. And as I fell forward, Rich looked out and shouted, SHARK! <laughs> I looked down, there was a seven foot shark <laughs> and a weapons officer. Every man in that water <coughs> headed for that rope ladder. The first man to reach that rope ladder, a man by the name of Sub Lieutenant John Borley. As Sub Lieutenant Borley reached that rope ladder, he glanced behind him and saw the next man behind him was the captain. <laughs> now, being an ambitious young naval officer, he moved to one side and said, After you, sir. An invitation that the captain accepted without hesitation. <laughs> and so did the whole of the rest of the ship. <laughs> Everyone climbed up that rope ladder. Well, that, well, that's actually not entirely true. Half the men climbed up that rope ladder. The other half climbed up Sub Lieutenant Borley, who was now just left hanging on the side of this rope ladder while people were using him as a step. <laughs> And I was watching all of this unfold while fighting my own losing battle of gravity near to the height of 
the shark, the shark started circling, which is what they do before they come into attack. And as it did so, it passed directly underneath the hydroplane. And it was at that moment that I lost my battle with gravity and fell in. Now, I'd love to be able to say to you that what actually happened is I fell astride the shark. <laughs> That's not what happened, that's not true. What actually happened is I fell with my feet in the middle of the shark. Now, has anyone here ever touched the shark? Don't you, you have, what's, what's the skin like? Rough. Rough, it is incredibly rough. It's like the roughest sandpaper you've ever touched in your life. And I don't know if it's the roughest skin of any creature alive, but it's certainly the roughest skin I've ever touched. And I've been able to pretty grope with women. <laughs> <laughs> and as, as my feet hit this shark's back, it just shredded the bottom of my feet and all the water around me, my new best buddy, the shark, turned <laughs> bright red, uh, which isn't exactly what you want when you're cuddling a hungry shark. <laughs> but luckily for me, the impact scared the shark and it swam away at speed. But nothing compared to the speed with which I swam. <laughs> and shredded feet or not, I climbed up that rope ladder and out of that water before Sub Lieutenant Bawley. And bear in mind, when Sub Lieutenant Bawley reached that rope ladder, I wasn't even in the water. <laughs> Rumour has it that the shark was so traumatised by the event, it didn't go swimming for the next two years. <laughs> 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 <laughs>